I was at Florida LSU in Gainesville. It was wild because it was a it was a fire everyone game. Like in the middle of the third quarter, both fan bases wanted every person on the field fired. Like it was it, it was crazy. There, I, I posted a stat in the middle of the third quarter. LSU had just gone up thirteen to ten, Ari, and LSU had run sixty plays, and Florida had run twenty five. Mm-hmm. And this enraged the Florida fans because they weren't, you know, they weren't running more plays. They were not, you know, staying on the field. And then this enraged the LSU fans because they weren't putting up points despite converting all these third downs and staying on the field. I don't know why Florida would be enraged. I thought they played hard out there. there, The fan base still wants Billy Napier gone. I think they're coming around on one of the reasons why Scott Strickland, the athletic director, said Billy Napier is staying is because it definitely means that DJ Lagway is staying. And if you heard DJ Lagway talk after the game tonight, you further believe that they're kind of, I don't think they're a package deal necessarily, but like if you weren't going to get Lane Kiffin, I don't think Florida was, then I think you'd rather have DJ Lagway and, and Billy Napier than another coach who may not excite you and not DJ Lagway. Because DJ Lagway is special, special. Like there is a play in that game, Ari. Now remember, I he is you. not he's not mobile today. Like he's 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 very mobile normally, but he's got a he's got a hurt hamstring. So he's not moving. Like we know that LSU's kryptonite is is designed quarterback runs. They didn't call a single one because he's not mobile. Like Whit Weeks, the LSU linebacker, goes, We knew he was on one leg out there. Still didn't get sacked. Like there was a pl- there's a play where it's tied at 13. Both edges beat their guys. So both edges are coming at DJ Lagway like a pincers movement. And then one of the linebackers is coming through the B gap on a blitz and is about to hit him. And basically he's wrapping his arms around Lagway as these two edges are closing in. And Lagway just goes, whoop, like flicks his wrist 35 yards down the field to Elijah Badger. It was incredible. It hit him in the face with the ball. Like it was perfect. Um, and it reminded me because there was a signature play or two during his high school times down there at Willis where he jumped and threw the ball 70 yards, like without his feet on the ground. And it's just like, I know their offense isn't lighting up the scoreboard right now, but if you watch this kid play, you see the elements of of something really special. So, you know, I, yeah. I'm happy to hear that. Mr. There's always another quarterback is kind of on the other side of this here. No, no, um, I, I listen. It's taken a couple times seeing DJ Lagway in person. I have completely renounced that. Protect number two at all costs. <laughs> That's the guy. He's more important than the coach. There's always another five star when the five star isn't playing well, but when the five star is playing playing well or showing you that he's going to be a hit, then there isn't another quarterback. You want to keep that because it's so hard to find that. Well, there, guy. there's not anybody else who can do what he does, and and I think he's doing it with talent that they can improve upon because there will be people in the transfer portal who want to play with him. Yeah. I'm with you. I'm with you. And also, if they've got some of that buyout money laying around, you know, maybe throw a few, uh, mm-hmm. you know, yep. quarter Spread it around. No. Yeah. Receivers, edge rushers, probably interior D linemen, maybe a couple offensive linemen. But yeah, it, it, this, this guy is, he's special, special. And that makes everything interesting. Like, Perhaps I think if he's not mobile next week against Ole Miss, he's going to struggle because Ole Miss is so good at rushing the passer. And I'm not expecting Florida to beat Ole Miss. Listen, Florida isn't a poverty program, so I'm not going to pretend like their season's good. Like I actually got an email from somebody about Florida, and this might actually uh, be worth just reading right now. Do you mind? Because it's about Florida. Go for it. Yeah. Yep. This is from Josh Johnson. Uh, thank you so much for listening to the show, Josh, and uh, liking it enough to at least reach out. Uh, if you guys want to talk to me and Andy, email us. We do appreciate you guys' loyalty and you being here. Um, Ari, I'm a massive Florida Gators fan, and I definitely, I am definitely unreasonable. But there are a few facts worth evaluating. One, the talent composites have Florida Gators as a top 20 talented roster. 
Um, two, Florida is likely going to finish five and seven or at best six and six. And he sent this in, on Halloween. Okay. Three, it's likely that all six or seven losses will come against teams that finish in the top 15 or 20. Miami, mm-hmm. Texas A&M, Georgia, Texas LSU, Tennessee, and Ole Miss. They seem to be getting better each game. They play hard, and the young talent is starting to shine. I hear I hear people constantly saying that Florida State and Florida are dumpster fires, but I'm actually very optimistic about next year if we can just pull out a couple of wins and get bowl eligibility and add to our roster. Is it actually fair to act like the Gators are fully off the rails? Thoughts? Oh, I think that's completely fair. I was actually surprised. I thought there were more fans like Josh after the Georgia game. And that was actually written to you before the Georgia game. But Mm -hmm. I thought there were more fans like Josh. And I had been told, hey, you know, the the decision, like the money people were out on Billy, they're now back in. They don't think they're going to get Lane. There's a good chance they're going to keep Billy. So I write this column about, okay, what do you do if you're Florida? And basically, you know, laid out a couple different paths. And one was fire Billy Napier. One's keep him. One is keep it. Well, one is keep him and then throw a bunch of money into the portal and actually buy players that are really good. The next one is keep him, but do exactly what you've been doing in the portal, which is nothing. And I was really surprised that most of the people who responded to me and most of the people on the Gators online message board were still in the fire Billy Napier camp. I thought it would be more, I don't know, closer to 50, 50. It was not even close to 50, 50. But there are people out there like Josh, and Josh is not being unreasonable. They have gotten better this year, S- significantly better. Like they had seven sacks today against an LSU team that only given up six the whole, the whole season. Like Florida hadn't been rushing the passer well, but they have gotten better at very at, at, at a couple different things that they really didn't do well at the beginning of the season. And then you add in DJ Lagway. And yes, I, I, I'm with Josh that you should have some optimism. Yeah, it's like the the push pool of the idea of, well, wow, Florida got a lot better. And if they finish six and six, it's a hell of a lot better of a finish than we thought it would be after the Miami game. Right. But then on the other hand, it's like Florida lost six games this year. And I know they mm-hmm. had a hard schedule, but like. Right. And he's, and he's under 500 as a, as a coach in three years at Florida. And that's unacceptable. Not a po- Again, not a poverty program. So, yeah. you know, we are, we are, it's like, it just depends on the type of person you are and how you want to look at it. Like if you want to fire him, I think that the results for the first few years of his tenure there are unacceptable. Well, but on the other so hand, Anthony, I also Anthony asked me the question, what should Billy Napier's record be next year to keep his job? I said, I wrote this in the column when they, when they said they were keeping him it's playoff or bust. He makes the playoffs or you fire him. You you give him the resources to actually compete in the transfer portal and get some players. And he either takes you to the playoff or you fire him. That's it. Yeah, because you is so that, that is that means- is that unreasonable? I think that uh it's not unreasonable because playoff or bust doesn't mean what it did last year. Playoff right. bus is a t- ten and two, um, and having a season like one of the five teams in the cluster we're talking about, which isn't correct, amazing. So, like, correct. I think and, we, and we don't know. Playoff- we don't know what the schedule will be like because we don't know what Miami's quarterback situation will be. We don't know what Ole Miss will look like because their roster will be radically reshaped. Uh, um, but I think you can reasonably expect Georgia to be very good, Tennessee to be very good, Texas to be very good. Uh, you know, I think LSU would be better. Four state can't get much worse. So I, yeah, but, but I, am I, am I being unfair by saying that? No, because I think 10 and two is reasonable. I think by year four, winning 10 games is like at Florida is reasonable. The problem is that they play a very difficult schedule. So like they do, I don't know if the difference between 10 and two and nine and three is as huge of a gap as keeping your job and losing it. But at the same time, I also understand that if you say, if you would have given Billy 
at the beginning of his contract when he put his name uh, in ink on that contract saying if you don't win 10 games at least once in your first four years, you're fired, that he probably would have thought that was reasonable himself. So, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. And to me, I think we will know by June whether he's going to do it or not. I think that's the funniest part. It's like I don't think that he's a terrible coach. I think he's mm-hmm. done a terrible job of upgrading his roster. So we'll we'll be able to tell if he's doing something different yeah. before they play. 